Hi everyone and welcome along to this week's tutorial. I'm so excited because we're going to paint a beautiful field of sunflowers and celebrate that last bit of sunshine we're getting before we head into autumn. Now I am very excited to let you know that Skillshare are sponsoring our video today and I can't wait to tell you all about what they've got coming up just for you. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right, I have a piece of paper here, six by eight inches. I've taped it down because we're gonna be using some real wet washes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just draw in some um, sort of fried eggs, I suppose. Um, what I'm doing is I'm drawing in the middle of a sunflower and then I'm just more faintly drawing in the sort of halo of petals. Now, obviously sunflowers aren't all facing us completely so th for these ones I'm just going to make an oval and then just a slightly bigger sort of slightly rough equivalent shape so I'm just going to fill in a few of these and basically what these are going to be are our sunflowers that are going to be in the foreground of our piece so we're going to paint some masking fluid on these to keep them nice and crisp. And then we will be doing a lovely sort of loose version of them in the background. So masking fluid is literally what it says on the tin. If you want to mask uh, an area uh, with a straight edge, use masking tape. If you want to do um, something a little more uh, bespoke like uh, an actual drawn shape you need masking fluid and we're going to paint it on so i've got my masking fluid here and i'm using a brush that i very much sort of um don't tend to to use for anything other than masking fluid because it really does sort of get clogged up in the bristles so you can buy a specific applicator if you want but i find i just sort of uh, allocate one brush to the cause. But whilst I'm painting this in, let me tell you all about today's video sponsors who are Skillshare. So uh, Skillshare are a company that many of us will be familiar with of a, an amazing catalogue of online learning and classes. But what makes Skillshare unique is it's the largest online and commu um, learning community for creatives, um, with a wide depth and breadth of topics ranging from illustration and graphic design to music and marketing. And what's really brilliant is whilst it's great for learning new hobbies, new skills, it's also brilliant for adding to um, tools to use in a creative career. And that really appeals to me as someone who has a creative career. So I have been looking at recently a fantastic Skillshare class, um, Mastering Adobe Illustrator, 10 New Tips and Tricks to Maximize Your Efficiency and Creativity by DKNG Studios Design, and it's a design and illustration focused class. And you get a peek behind the curtain to see how the company um, DKNG NG, sorry, work inside the actual project files. So you're seeing like real life files and it's just such a fantastic online and hands-on way of learning a new skill such as Adobe Illustrator. Because I don't know about you, but I am good with a paintbrush, but when it comes to computers, it takes me a little bit longer. And so it's fantastic that Skillshare have these classes to help me, to help all of us <laughs> with things that we're not so good at. So um, a class like that is just one example of the wide range of amazing experiences you can have on Skillshare. And um, if you want to unlock your creativity and learn something new, then Skillshare is giving you a one month free trial for anyone who clicks the link in the description below. So that is from Skillshare to all of us. And I really hope you uh, make the most of that really fantastic offer. So I am just finishing off our sunflowers and we're going to also paint in some stems as well just to help really define these plants right in the foreground of the piece so here we go with some long stems right down 
and a few leaves here and there. And I'm doing this all with a size one brush. And what we'll be doing is we'll put, be putting in a wash next, but we will also make sure that with that wash we can still do some watercolour painting over the top of it. But what's really nice when using masking fluid is you have a variety of, of levels of colour that you're painting on top of and some just pure unpainted space like this. So now we have our dried masking fluid and we're ready to paint. So I've got my mop brush here, which is available um, and a really good brush, really good brush to have in your kit. And I'm just, you can see mopping over the top of my masking fluid. I'm just sort of lightly wetting the page. We don't want it sopping wet with, with puddles everywhere. So that's all done nicely. And I've got some cobalt blue deep here and some Windsor blue. Just mix those together and we're going to paint in a few sort of clouds in the sky just by sort of allowing the brush to create a bit of sort of unpainted space and light and shade. And I'm bringing the blue sort of down into the tops of the sunflowers. So I'm just bringing a little blue sort of underneath some of these clouds. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to paint in just a little bit of the field of sunflowers in the background. So for this we need green gold and we need sap green. I'm just sort of allowing the page just to have you know a few extra seconds of that blue settling in on the page. That's always a good idea. And then also some cadmium yellow. So let's begin. So I'm going to dab in the colour for starters because the tops of the field, we're going to see all sorts of plants and texture from the sunflowers. So I want to very much dab this in with a size 8 pointed round brush. I'm going to start to introduce some sap green just a little bit further down in because we're just starting to get a, a slightly darker, seeing less of the light on the sheet. Now I'm going to add just a little bit more water to my brush there just to make sure the colour's travelling really nicely. Don't worry if you get a little like flick of colour like that onto the page because these things can be very easily dealt with. Let me just finish this off and I'll show you how to get rid of something like that. A little bit of um, kitchen roll and we can just get rid of that like that. Perfect. Okay, next a little bit of Payne's Grey in with my green tones there and now this is going to come up from the bottom and in from the sides. And I'm going to also sort of just do a few sort of flicked lines of colour there. We're just sort of creating a bit of a, a textured field in behind. But the other thing that we really need to make sure we can see is some sunflowers. So they're going to go in the last because I want that the page, especially just up the top here, to have really settled in and dried. So whilst I'm waiting for that, I'm just mixing up Burnt Sienna and Moon Glow together to give us a deep dark brown, which will be the center of those sunflowers. And we've got our cadmium yellow already and woken up over here. I also think it would be sensible to have a bit of cadmium orange too, just as a useful low light. Okay, I'm gonna change my water over, some clean water. 
and I'm going to go down to a, I think size fours and size twos are good. I think size two will be perfect for this because the color is still going to spread a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of place in, we're not going to sort of bother creating the petal shapes quite like we were, but I want to create sort of round halos of petals like that. And what's quite fun, you could place them in sort of right behind some of the, the masking fluid areas. some in the sky, some bit further down. Essentially, we're going to see them really sort of along the top of the, of the field. Some much smaller off in the distance. But you can see how that's spreading. But what's really nice is it's spreading a lot less than all of the other colors have been meaning that we are getting closer to our page drying. Just do one off the edge there as well, and maybe just one nice tall one in the distance there. Now I'm going to add some of this dark color in the center, and it's obviously going to sort of bleed and blend out, so we don't want too much of it. but it does give the sunflower its very distinctive appearance, doesn't it? So we're doing this all just sort of gradually allowing those sunflowers to dry on the page. So they're quite defined in a, in a way. Rather pleased with that. And then finally, I'm going to take some sap green and I'm just going to place in a few, a few stems here and there. And of course you can paint over the masking fluid and then a few sort of green gold leaves here and there, because you, yeah, you can really see it's perfect now. It's really starting to, to dry and allow us to paint in things that aren't going to be too loose, which is what we want. We want just a little bit of definition. I think this is looking lovely. Okay, now we do want it to dry 100%. So we're just going to leave this and then we can peel off the masking fluid and paint in those more defined sunflowers in the front. Okay, here's a fun moment. I'm starting to rub off the masking fluid. Um, when I've done like a big wash like this, I like to first just take an eraser and just start the rubbing process rather than with my finger because I just find sometimes you might get a bit of a smudge of paint on your finger from the wash. There's a lot of color floating around. You can see, there we go. Um, and the rubber just makes it that little bit more neat and tidy. But yeah, you can see how it's really popping. Masking fluid, it's funny, I don't really like the smell of it, but it's a useful, it's a useful tool. That was extremely satisfying. And now I'm taking my size zero brush and some cadmium yellow, and I am going to start painting in some defined sunflowers. So I'm using the masked off area as my guide. But what's rather nice is because we've painted a, a nice a light bright wash of sunny blue sky over the back, um, 
I can actually sort of go slightly off the beaten path with certain areas um, and I want to just add in just a little bit of cadmium orange from the middle outwards just gives those sunflowers that little bit extra realism Cadmium yellow is a good colour um, that has a slight opaque appearance um, so it means that it will stand up on top of other colours just that little bit better than other yellows that don't have cadmium in the title. Okay so I'm going to paint in all the petals and then we'll do the next stage. Next I'm just mixing up a little bit of yellow ochre and I'm going to paint in a circle on a now sort of dried sunflower. Bring that in and then take that much darker colour we were using on the, uh, the soft focus sunflowers and put it in the middle and also I'm just going to pop a bit sort of on the outer edge on the bottom half as well. And then I'm just going to sort of dab that a little bit just to get it nicely sort of tied in together. So popping it in on the bottom edge gives that sense of the light sort of hitting it and the shadow underneath. And now it's time to start placing in some of these more defined leaves. So the leaves that have sort of grown out over the front of the stem I'm painting those in first, so I'm actually using quite a small brush just for precision. Some green gold and then just placing in a bit of sap green to just help define the edges, make them really, really uh, nice and crisp. So it's those ones that are sort of sat across the front of those stems. A little bit of a green gold wash and a low light. of sap green. So having painted in all those leaves we're now going to sort of create stems like this. So with green gold and my size zero brush I'm just going to begin by painting in so I have two parallel lines and for the leaves just get those in there, a little bit of green on there. And then with the sap green just coming up underneath getting a nice bit of darkness under there and then using some concentrated sap green to just place in one or two more leaves. Um, I think that's quite nice for that one. So we'll go again. So green gold to start with and the size zero brush is fine for this and just placing in the, the leaves that we haven't painted in yet. Nice and sort of conventional as we've been doing. And little bits of unpainted space left left unpainted is cool. Like I think it's a nice sort of highlight on the piece. And then finishing off the stem. And then if you want to go down a brush size for this bit, please do for that. But then for the leaves, I wouldn't go any smaller than this size zero. So I'm starting from the stem and squashing the bristles out like that. Or you can do more of a sort of broad leaf and bring it in like that. But they do tend to sort of really bend over um, sunflower leaves. 
The last thing I'm going to do is I've added a bit of Payne's Grey to my Cadmium Yellow, which makes an interesting kind of slightly sludgy green mix. And I'm just placing it on some of the petals, just with my four tenths brush. and it's allowing me to just define those petals just nicely and just give them a slightly more rounded feel. So we've now finished painting, um, so I'm just going to lightly rub out the pencil that I can still see using a hard eraser and just lightly rubbing allows the pencil to come away quite easily and then we can peel off the masking tape and see what we're left with. And there you have your sunny sunflower field with a gorgeous little crisp border just from using the masking tape and painting right up until the edges. I hope you enjoyed that one and uh, yeah, I look forward to painting with you again. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say another big thank you to our sponsor Skillshare and to remind you that if you want to unlock your creativity and learn something new, you can get a one month free trial from Skillshare by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye.